like back at you again. Um, I can't remember whether I videoed it or not. Um, basically, compressor's not pumping very well. System short of gas is on R22 and it's 25 years old. So it's beyond fixing really. Um, we priced up a new one, but they were um, they had some coming in, but they'd sold them before they were actually going to come in. So we'd be looking at six or seven weeks to get one, um, and the customer's not got time for that. So we're going to rip this out, this package unit, and first uh, system we build up our bits. Um, I've gone for a wall mounted evaporator again because we, we they hang deer in, in the room, it's quite a small room. If we put a normal ceiling mounted unit, we'd take up too much, you know, the room's only this big. And if you've got a box in there for your that, you've only got a tiny bit of space to put your hang your deer in there. Whereas this, this thing as it is, because it's ceiling mounted, it's pretty much flush inside, so they can they can go nearly within a foot or so of the back wall. Um, so we've gone with a wall mounted unit. We're having some fun getting the bits uh, for that. Let's see. Also, they said they had all the stuff in stock, and then yesterday um, they phoned up and said they didn't have two bits, they had none in the company, and the manufacturers didn't even have any. So I've got some orders from somewhere else, I'm hoping they're going to be the right bits that I've got to pick up tomorrow morning. And it's Tuesday today, and I've got to have this working by Friday night, because uh, I think shooting season starts on Saturday. Anyway, get the gas took out of it, it's only got a tiny bit in there, R22. We took out 210 grams, it might be 270. So maybe it's got 300 grams in it. Uh, I don't know what it holds normally. 750, so yeah, a third of a charge. And the compressor was making some funny noises too, so. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, that had 390 grams in it. Um, so, I thought it had been doing better than it was. It wasn't even lowering the temperature. So, it does really point to that compressor being knackered as well. Right, that's the evaporator section. Just uh, all you've got is this bit showing in the room and an inch or two of uh, the side there. And then the evaporator core is actually up in the top. And it should, <laughs> it's actually missing off of this one. It should have a baffle on here that stands up and just touches against the drain pan. So the uh, fans are, uh, I think they I think they suck up and blow through the coil. So they'd suck up and blow through here and then come out and then come out through these vents that are angled um, so that wouldn't have helped it too much <coughs> there's not even a piece of it left in here so I'm guessing that's been took out a while ago I think the coil was just held in with a couple of screws either end and it probably dropped down and you've got the drain and the pipe book going through Right, that's what's left of it. Um, <coughs> there's, I, I think they're over 70 kilos. Uh, 79 kilos, 75 kilos. Not counting all the dirt. And I'm here on my own, so... Sorry, I'll take it to bits. Um, so... We've got... A hole in the roof, and um, we've got a sheet of metal which we've got off eBay. Um, it's twice as big as it needs to be, so we can cut it in half and put a patch here. And I've got a tin of uh, expanding foam. I should have a tin of expanding foam. Yep. There we go. So we can put the plate on the bottom. And then uh, fill it up, put the plate on the top, and that'll 
re-insulate that gap. Uh, that light's going to have to go, I think, because our unit's probably going to be fairly highly mounted. Higher the better, really. But yeah, if we put a ceiling mounted one, by the time you've got the gap at the back, because they tend to, the small ones tend to be wedge shaped, so they hinge down, you need four inches, five inches at the back for that to hinge down and you be, to be able to lift it off. By the time you've done that, the end of the coil is going to be here. So it's, it's going to be blowing right on um, any, any meat they've got hanging up here. Whereas with the wall mount, um, it's, a, it's a good foot gap. Um, anyway, that was the uh, that was the thinking behind that. Now we have a bit of clean up, and then uh, let's get this cut in half. Get a little pipe cut in half. Right, we've got that cut um, very roughly in half. <laughs> with uh, use the nibbler. Uh, just cut some little half moon shapes. Um, I've lost my piece of wood I use for keeping things level and levering things and propping doors open and so on. So I use my level, but it's not quite long enough. So I've got to get a clamp on it at one end. So it's not it's not a very straight line, but it doesn't doesn't need to be, it's just got to cover that hole up so that'll get the job done. Okay, that's the evaporator. Same as that last one we did, but just bigger. Um, and that's our drain kit and the uh, wall mounting kit, which is just like a 90 degree bend on here. Um, looks like we're missing the rivet out to there. But uh, actually, we might just fire the text through straight through into the back wall. I'll see what I've got. I might put a bolt through from behind, might be a better job. It's a quick tip. I wanted to know what model that compressor was, but the, it was difficult to read the badge. So you get a bit of paper and lay it on and then rub it with a pencil. You can get the number of flares, a J7225F. Um, just they, they were a bit unclear. It, you know, it can work even if they're quite rusty. Right, um, so these could be used with any various different refrigerants. Um, they don't come with an expansion valve fitted, so you have to get one to suit. Um, we're going to try run this on 513A, which is a replacement for 134A. It's got about a third of the global warming potential. Anyway, so we've got to try and mount this in here somewhere um, where we can get all the connections made, get all the pipes out and uh, not catch, um, impinge on the fan motors at all. But this one's quite a bit deeper, coils higher up, so there's more space in here. The other one's about, probably about that deep, so there's probably another inch and a half to play with. Um, Suction line comes out here, which will probably run off, put a bit of a bend on it, and kink it over, and probably probably drill a hole here, and run everything out the back wall. Yeah, they don't, they don't give you a lot of room really to get out in the, these little little evaporators. Okay, I've had a bit of a think. Um, that's long enough to get that to there. Um, I'll probably put more of a bend on that just to use some of that length up. And then that valve will sit like that. 
you'd be able to get the super heat now if you need to. Liquid line's going to come up here, run across, and then over to there, which is where we're going to draw the hole. And I think the easiest thing to do is to use a bend um, on there. Not that I like using them. I like to do everything without fittings if I can, but I've not got enough room when you look side. Oop. By the time I've brought that out and put a bend on it, it's going to be right on the on the cover, especially if I've got armor flex on it. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to drill through there, big enough to get the two pipes through. And then we'll probably have a straight piece there, long enough to get the file onto, because they don't give you a lot of room for that either. Yeah, and like I said, liquid line just come around here, run it out there, and I'll probably put a clip in it or something in here, just to take the weight of that valve. So that's the plan, so we're going to get this hole drilled, then we'll lift this up, um, mark the hole on the cauldron wall and get that drilled through. Um, then we can get the valve brazed in, get that extended to the liquid line run around and a stub poked out. And the suction line is going to come in from the other way so we'll just leave that. So we put that bung back in. If you ever need to put these bungs back, um, what you want to do is get an Allen key. I could probably do with one a bit bigger than that but you, you don't want anything like a screwdriver that's sharp. You just push it. It's easier to handle, but there you go. It's gone back in. Okay, that's on the wall. Just sit on to the one nut at the moment. But I've got the, I've got some big penny washers, so I need to put them on afterwards because it won't hook over. They won't fit through the keyholes slot. So anyway, we've got that marked where that hole needs to be. So I'll get, lift this down to get that done, and then we can get the valve fitted in here then. Okay, that's got the hole through there. What's that done? I usually, when I'm drilling um, the hole saws, usually have the drill set on screwdriver in on maximum torque. Um, that way, if it grabs, the clutch will give on there instead of it twisting your wrist and the other good thing is you don't snap any teeth off because I've had these um, I must have had these over 10 years these hole saws um, I mean you know they don't go probably a month or two without getting used but they have done quite a few jobs and that's just cut through th three sheets of tin has gone through that and the cold room and the last one I did, and I don't know how many other times I've used it before. But yeah, you can see. Saves uh, breaking a wrist or snapping the teeth off. So if, it's, if the clutch starts giving, you just take take the pressure off a bit. And they don't, I mean that drill's ancient, that's 2004 I think that is. So, that's 16 years old. Um, so, uh, I've not worn the clutch out in it yet, doing that. Okay, we've bent, um, well we've got that brazed in, that'll push back a bit and down once, it's, uh, once we've got this one done. Um, so we've bent this up, that should, that should drop through there, and that's going to go onto there. And then we'll have our clip. I'll get a cable cleat for like armoured cable um, just to clamp around there. I mean, it might have put a bit of insulating tape to fatten that up a bit, but it'll, it'll just grip that and take the weight of the valve so it's not bouncing them down in the airflow. And that'll just go through the wall, and then we'll bend it up the wall and join onto it. Okay, I've got that on the wall. 
looking uh, vaguely level. Uh, I don't think the box is level, it's on an old dairy floor which probably slopes slightly so they could, they could um, wash it down and it would drain. Well, we've got these uh, hung off of six M6, so it's like three quarters. Uh, it's threaded rod and penny washers. And I found a nut and bolt stainless that I put through there where they'd missed the threaded rivet. So it's, you know, uh, luckily all these screws come out and went back in nice, so that was better than the last one we did. Um, yeah, so we've got the orifice to go in there, the, the liquid line to run round, suction line out, and then the pipe works all outside. Then we've got the drain heaters to fit, drain heaters, the uh, coil heater and the what are you, whatever this piece is called, wall kit heater uh, to go in and then put the wires back into there. Yep, 